Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Advanced WordPress Plugin Development. I'm sure you're enjoying the course. In the previous videos, we have covered certain aspects of caching. We talked about different types of caching such as page cache, browser cache, object cache, what is object cache, why it is needed. And in this video, we're going to talk about how caching works in WordPress. I'm sure you're pretty excited to know more about it. Excellent. So let's begin. Well, WordPress implements an object cache through two different mechanisms. Number one is the transients. And number two is the WP object cache class. So let's first talk about transient. So WordPress supports persistent object caching via transient API that allows you to store, retrieve, and delete objects from the database. By default, the transients cache uses the WP options table for data storage. So where is the transient cache stored? It is stored inside of the WP options table. Now storing data in MySQL database allows much faster retrieval of the data than the object's original location, but it is still slower and riskier option for storing cache data. It is usually a better strategy to separate the caching engine from the main data stores in order to maximize the efficiency of both stores. So transients can inherently be sped up by the caching plugins. This means that rather than implementing the caching yourself, when you're using caching plugins, there are certain caching plugins, for example, a memcache plugins, that plugin would make the WordPress store transient values in fast memory instead of storing in the database. For this reason, transient should be used to store any data that is expected to expire or which can expire at any time. Okay, unknown to have an expiry date. Let's say that the expiry time is like 24 hours. Now the data may or may not be available within that 24 hours time, but it'll definitely not be available after 24 hours. Now we'll talk about the WP object cache class. Now WP object cache class defines the storage engine for WordPress object cache. Now by default, the cache is not persistent. Now it can be overridden with a custom class by configuring WordPress to use any storage engines such as memcached and APC as an object cache. So you can override this class using some of the plugins and those plugins will override the WP object cache and implement the caching. Extending WP object cache class gives you more control on caching engine compared to using the transient API. Now let's talk about two types of object cache. First is impersistent and second is persistent. When we were talking about the transient API, you use the term persistent, right? So for, let's first understand what impersistent is. So WordPress has the object caching built in with the WP object cache class. But this inherent object caching in WordPress is not persistent by default. This means that the cache data is only stored for as long as the request to database lasts, which is ultimately no more than one page load and it's inefficient, which means during the first request. So for example, let's say you're gonna make a complex query over and over again during the same page request, okay? so. On that single page request, you can store the data into the WP object cache, okay? So that the next time in the same request, if you want to get the data and use it, you can do that. But the moment the page refresh and the next request goes uh, for the page, then data is not gonna be present. So the data is not persistent by default. So how do we make that persistent? So that's where the persistent object cache comes into picture. To overcome the above, you can use the persistent object caching solutions such as Redis and Memcached. Now Redis provides a consistent Redis object cache backend for WordPress that works with various Redis clients. For this, a Redis service is required. So rather than keeping the cache on your own server, we can offload that and use a Redis server. Okay, so all the cache data when put on the Redis server is definitely offloading some of the work from your server to another server and that's pretty useful, okay? So instead of implementing it yourself, there are plugins available which you can use, which we will talk about in some time for your Redis cache. Then you have memcached. In memcached, all the information is stored in key values and that is stored in RAM that uses client server architecture. 
and it's important to note that your hosting server should have that installed some of the common hosting providers that offer memcache are a2 hosting cloudways or siteground again similar to the redis where we require redis server in memcache we also need a memcache server so to sum it up by default wordpress has the object cache but that's not persistent so data is going to be lost next time the page is requested so to make it persistent we go ahead and use the object caching solutions such as redis and memcache so that the next time the page is hit again we are able to retrieve that data from a persistent storage now rather than keeping the data onto our own server we use we use the caching engine server such as redis server or memcache server depending on which caching solution you're going with now that we understand how caching works in WordPress, in the next video, we're going to talk about how to implement caching in WordPress. Okay, so I hope you did like the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. And I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.